In this video, I will determine the irreducible representations of the vibrational modes of the tetra chloride platinate transition metal complex with a D4H point group. The oxidation number of this platinum is plus 2. Overall, this complex has a negative charge. So first, we just count the total number of uh, atoms. There are five atoms here. Each atom can move in the x, y, and z direction. So there are a total of 15 motions. So out of the 15 motions, three will be the concerted the translation of the entire complex. Three will be the rotation of the entire complex. So the number of vibration modes should be 15 minus 3 minus 3 equals 9 and uh, we'll have to determine the symmetry or irreducible representations of this nine vibration modes first we need to have the character table of this uh, d4h point group and over here we can see well there are a total of uh, 10 uh, columns and 10 rows uh, 10 columns correspond to the 10 different classes of symmetry operations and this 10 rows correspond to the 10 irreducible representations so first this e is the identity element and then this c4 is uh, the principal rotation axis there are two c4 here because you can rotate the complex 90 degrees or 270 degrees there are two different symmetry operations so the order of this class of symmetry operation is 2. But what about uh, rotating um, 180 degrees? Actually, it's just C2. So it's C2 here. And this is a class of only one operation. So we'll put a number one here. Uh, this C2 primes uh, are perpendicular to the principal axis. And this C2 primes actually cross uh, one, two, three, three atoms here. So this is one of the C2 prime, and then there's a second C2 prime. Uh, how about C2 double prime? We have two C2 double prime symmetry elements. So one here, the other is this. Again, these two are also perpendicular to the principal axis. There is an inversion center here, and there are two S4 improper symmetry elements. Uh, S4 means, oh, I'm sorry, two improper symmetry operations. There's one S4 axis, which is the same as the C4 axis. S4 means you rotate the molecule 90 degrees, followed by a reflection. But again, those five atoms are on the same plan, on the same sigma H plan. So this uh, S4 operation is the same as the C4 operation. And you can also rotate the molecule 270 degrees, followed by a reflection. And uh, that's just uh, this S4 to the power of 3. And what about S4 to the power of 2? You do this S4 operation twice. That means you rotate the molecule 180 degrees, followed by a reflection. That's the inversion center. And easily we can tell this sigma H, this sigma H horizontal sigma contains all four, all five atoms. And then you have two sigma V's and two sigma D's. What's the difference? Well, they are essentially the same. They uh, can be considered sigma V's in a C and V point group, but sigma D's bisect uh, C2 axis. So bisect those C2 axis. All right, now let's uh, look at the uh, number of atoms that remain in the original position after a symmetry operation. So first, let's do uh, uh, just identity symmetry operation, which means doing nothing. If we do nothing, all five atoms remain in their original position, so we put a number five here. C4 rotation, either it's 90 degrees or 270 degrees, only the platinum atom stays in the original position. So we put one here, only one atom remains in the original position. C2, this C2 is simply this C4 squared. You rotate the molecule 90 degrees and another 90 degrees again, 
all four chlorine atoms are moved out of their original positions. Only the platinum atom stays in the original position, so we put number one here. How about C2 prime? C2 prime uh, contains three atoms, chlorine, platinum, chlorine here. Or this one, chlorine, platinum, chlorine, so you put number three here. C2 double prime, okay, only one atom remains in the original position because this is C2 double prime and there's another C2 double prime. How about inversion center? This is the inversion center, only platinum remains in the original position after the inversion. And then you have uh, uh, S4 symmetry operations, again only one atom. The platinum atom remains in the original position. Sigma H, sigma H contains the five atoms, therefore uh, the reflection with respect to the sigma H uh, leaves all five atoms in the original position. And then sigma V contains three atoms here or three atoms here. So put a number three here and sigma V, well this is actually sigma D, so sigma D, this one sigma D and another one sigma D. Uh, this two sigma D symmetry plans contain only one atom, the platinum atom, so we'll put number one here. And then we have this row of 10 numbers. We multiply this 10 numbers with the sum of the characters of X, Y, and Z. How do we get this? If we double click this number, it's simply the sum of this character one in the A to U row and this two in the EU row. Why? Because you just look for X and Y here. X and Y are degenerate, you have a number 2 here, and Z, you have a degeneracy of 1. So we just sum it up, we get 3. And then we just drag it from left to right, we get 10 numbers in this row. Those are the sum of the characters of X, Y, and Z under each class of symmetry operations. And then do, we do a simple multiplication, we have this 3 times 5. And then we just drag it again left to right. That's just the number of atoms that remain in their original positions multiplied by the sum of the characters of X, Y, and Z. We're not done yet because in some columns we have more than one symmetry operation. So we're using these 10 numbers multiplied by the number of symmetry operations. They're also called the order of each symmetry operation. So you have 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1 and so on. So if we do this multiplication using uh, the Excel function for multiplication, you get B18 times B1. This is B18. Over here, this is B1. And again, we drag it from left to right, and we have uh, another row of 10 numbers. This 10 numbers will be multiplied by the 10 numbers in the A1G row and then A2G row, and then B1G row, and B2G row, and so on, all the way to this EU. So uh, let me show you how to do it. So this is just B$19, this B$19. $19 means we have this 19 fixed. B$19 times B4, B4 is here, that's for AG. So again, we're going to just do this operation, and we drag it from left to right. We get 10 numbers for A1G, and we drag it all the way down, and we have 10 numbers for each of the 10 irreducible representations. And then we sum up the 10 numbers in the A1G row. Similarly, we sum up the 10 numbers in the A2G row. So we drag it down, we're doing the sum. And the sums, we have 10 sums corresponding to the 10 irreducible representations. The 10 sums divided by the order of the character table, which is 16, and over here is just the division here. And then we drag it down. What does that tell us? It tells us uh, among the 15 uh, motions of the five atoms, we may form one A1G, one A2G, one B1G, one B2G, one EG, 0A1U, 2A2U, 0B1U, 1B2U, and 3EU. And we have some negative numbers here, why so? Uh, we are trying to determine the number of uh, irreducible representations for each um, uh, this, uh, for the vibrational mode. So we have to subtract the translation, uh, three of them, we need to subtract the three translational modes and three rotational modes. 
So we're going to look for those uh, translations. We have EU and A1, A2U as translations. We have EG and A2G as rotations. So we need to subtract uh, EU and A1, A2U and EG and A2G. Again, these two are the rotations. These two are the translations. Over here, this EU uh, means we have a degeneracy of 2. So basically, we need to use this numbers, subtract this numbers, we get the number of irreducible representations for the vibrations. So over here, I'm actually doing a sum here because those uh, are negative numbers. Again, over here, that's the sum of 1 and minus 1. We're doing subtraction here. So again, we just uh, drag it down. We get the number of irreducible representations for the vibration. We have 1A1G, 1B1G, 1B2G, 1A2U, 1B2U, and one, uh, two EUs. So let's look at those vibrations actually. So 1A1G, so this is the A1G. This is symmetrical stretching. And then we have B1G here, 1B1G, 1B1G. This is 1B1G. So this is bending and then B2G, okay, B2G. So you have uh, this two quarry atoms stretching and this two uh, PT chlorine bonds shrinking. So this is B2G. And how about the other irreducible representations? We have A2U here and we have A2U right here. This is a U symmetry. Again, uh, if uh, this chlorine is moving away from us, this chlorine is moving away from us, this is actually a U symmetry with respect to the inversion center. Uh, let's look at this EU before this B2U. So if we look at this EU, again, U symmetry, two of those. So you have two EUs, one EU here, another EU here. So over here and over here. And these motions are anti-symmetric with respect to the immersion center. Finally, there's another B2U, 1B2U, and we cannot find it in this picture. Again, I got this picture from the internet. It says there's another vibrational mode unassigned. It's labeled B2G. However, I don't think that's right. It should be B2U. Look, we have B2U here unassigned, and this one is supposed to be B2U, and it is B2U because, again, if you look at these two chlorine atoms, they are both moving away from us, and supposedly this is U symmetry with respect to the center of uh, symmetry, this, this inversion center. Also, these two chlorine atoms are moving towards us. Both are moving towards us. So if you actually draw two vectors here, so one vector perpendicular to the screen here, another vector perpendicular to the screen here. So you'll see the plus signs are uh, closer to us. The two minus signs are away from us. And then if you just, uh, you know, draw a uh, arrow pointing from uh, this uh, one end of this chlorine to the other end of the other chlorine, you'll see the sign change. So actually, again, if you just look at this motion, this is actually anti-symmetrical with respect to the inversion center. These two chlorine atoms, again, also are anti-symmetric with respect to the inversion center. So if you understand group theory, you understand the character table and the use of it, you can actually uh, find the error. Uh, for example, in here, this is supposed to be B2U, not B2G. All right, finally, I'm going to just uh, uh, talk about the order of the character table, basically just the total number of symmetry operations. So if you double click this, I'm just adding up all those symmetry operations, a total of 16, that's it. There's another way to determine the order of the character table. Basically, you look for the characters under this uh, E, identity element, and you square every single character uh, and you got these squares here, and then you sum up those squares, you get 16. Okay, so 16, 16, so.